teachers, today's students are gonna evaluate and write equivalent expressions. And so this is a day where we really just wanna give kids the opportunity to think about other equivalent ways to add two-digit numbers. Throughout second grade, one of the real places that kids get to explore the idea of equivalent expressions, or another thing you might hear is alternate algorithms is really through CGI when kids are using cubes. If you think about 34 plus 59, our kids have learned to stack their tens with their tens, their ones with their ones, start in the smallest place, add their ones, regroup if they need to, to find their answer. And this is one way we want kids to think about two-digit addition. But if you think about us as adults, if we see this problem or do this problem in our head when we're at the grocery store or when we're at the store, we don't always have a pen and paper. And most of us probably don't do mental math by thinking about stacking my tens with my tens or my ones with my ones. One way some of us might add this is we might think of it as 30 and 40, which makes 70. We might think of it as four and nine which makes 13, and then we might think of it as 70 and 13. Oops, 50, so this is 80 and this is 80. My bad, I wrote this out, but these are actually probably things you did in your head when you looked at this problem. Another way you might have thought of this problem if you did it in your head and you got 93 is you may have done some compensating. You may have thought of 34 plus 60 and gotten 94, and then you knew that you added too many when you added 60, so you did 94, take away one, to get 93. These are both examples of how we do mental math. One of the first ways it will show up is as kids are using cubes. So here, they may get out 34, and then they may start by getting out 60. So they may get out six tens, but they knew that they got out too many, so they pluck this one extra one off, and they make 59. I imagine many of our second graders are already doing this with cubes. And so I just wanna say that this is a day where we get kids to explore and evaluate equivalent expressions, but thinking of this as just one solitary lesson in our scope and sequence isn't quite enough. We really wanna think about where we build in opportunities for students to look at problems, do some mental math, explore two-digit addition in CGI. And I say all of that to just make sure that as we approach this lesson, we don't approach it singularly as just solve every expression and figure out whether it's equivalent. We really wanna give kids the opportunity to look at the equivalent expressions, evaluate whether they make sense based on what we know about the numbers in the equation, and then go ahead and solve. Okay, so you're gonna open with a very big, broad turn and talk. What do we know about two-digit addition? Maybe you're gonna think of an example, turn and talk to your partner, have many kids share out, and then you're gonna to get to this problem. So let's think about the equation 34 plus 59. We've learned that one way we can solve 34 plus 59 is to stack and add. That means we stack our ones with our ones and our tens with our tens, and then we start in the smallest place and add them up. So when we added 34 plus 59 by stacking and adding, we got 93. But there are some other ways we could represent 34 plus 59. When I think about the number 34, I see that it has three tens and four ones. So I could think of 34 as 30 and four, because 34 is made up of three tens, which is 30, and four ones, which is four. And here, depending on how strong your kids are with place value, you may need to get out your cubes. Okay, and we're adding 59, which has five tens and nine ones. So if I get out 59, I could think of 59 as 50 and nine. Well, we know we add tens with tens and ones with ones. And here, you're gonna pick these cubes up and move them together with the tens. Then you're gonna pick these ones up and move them together with the ones. And when I moved my tens with my tens and my ones with my ones, let me show you what I did. I had 30 plus 50, my three tens from 34 and my five tens from 50, plus these four ones and these nine ones. Let's add 30 plus 50 plus four plus nine and make sure it's still 93. 30 and 50, that's 80. 80 and four more, that's 84. Now let me press 84 and count on nine. It's 93. And when you look at this number sentence, where do you see the numbers 34 and 59? Turn and talk to your partner. That's right, so this is equivalent to 34 plus 59. Equivalent means that it's the same as. 
you can see that it has 34 and 59. Let's evaluate whether a few other expressions are equivalent to 34 plus 59. Read this number sentence with me. 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 9. But we really want to pause here and help kids think about, before we even solve this, do we think this is equivalent? Why or why not? So we do here want to build in some turn and talks. Look at this number sentence, just like 34, a 3 and a 4, and a 5 and a 9, just like 59. Before you solve, is this number a sentence equivalent? Why or why not? Turn and talk to your partner. Great. No, it's not equivalent, even though we see 3 and 4 and 5 and 9. That's not the same as 34 and 59. So 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 9 is way smaller than 34 plus 59. Let's go ahead and solve. What is it? It's 21, so is it equivalent? No way. And we already knew that before we solved. Now let's look at another one. 80 plus 13. Take a look at 80 plus 13. Now think to yourself, does 80 plus 13 make sense? What do you think? I hope one kid will say, well, 80 plus 13 is just 80 from the three tens and the five tens, and 13 is just the four ones and the nine ones when you put them together. So 80 plus 13 does make sense. Really looking at place value there. Okay, some of you think it is equivalent. Some of you think it isn't. Let's make sure we solve to figure it out. Maybe some kids are doing mental math here. Maybe some kids need to stack and add. Okay, 30 plus 18 is 93. Is it equivalent? Yes. And you want to make sure you make this connection if a kid doesn't make it. Oh, this is equivalent because 80 came from the tens and 13 came from the ones. Now let's look at one more. Read it. Think about whether it does make sense or doesn't make sense. Turn and talk to your partner. And then do make sure kids actually solve it to check whether it's equivalent. So you can see here, we're not just thinking about equivalent expressions as whether they have the same answer. We're really pushing kids to make sense of where we could find equivalent expressions from based on what we know about place value. Okay, and then just lots of practice together. Think about what your practice might sound like to really push kids to do some sense making before they actually solve, but making sure that we do reinforce the idea for kids that even though we make sense of these expressions and think about which one might make sense, we still do go back and solve all of them to be sure that we've found an equivalent expression. And that is that.